The Public Investment Fund is playing a critical role in Saudi Arabia's economic transformation. You have an enormous mandate, and if everything goes according to plan, you'll have trillions of dollars to manage. How do you plan to invest it? Well, um, BIF, as you said, is a main enabler for the Vision 2030. And uh, in Vision 2030, we tapped on a different number of things, uh, one of which is the uh, diversity. And um, if you look at our uh, assets and the management currently, one, it's uh, uh, mainly uh, in the Saudi economy, and two, it's mainly in the conventional uh, sectors. So uh, in order for us to have more diversity, we thought we should tap on different uh, pools of investments, one of which is the international uh, uh, pools. And the second thing is the uh, next, uh, uh, the, the uh, next generation investments, uh, things like uh, the um, uh, IoT, the robotics, the life science, uh, the, inter uh, uh, the, uh, the Internet of Things. Yasser, how much do you manage now in the Public Investment Fund? We're working on um, uh, getting our uh, books uh, in order. Uh, when I came in, uh, it was, um, uh, we had assets all over the place, so we had to consolidate. So now I think we're about $230 billion uh, assets under management, and we think by, um, uh, by 2020, and this would be announced, uh, I think, tomorrow, uh, it's going to be um, uh, way much more. Way much more meaning in excess of a trillion? Uh, no, I'm talking about 2020, remember. Okay. That's, that's in the two years. So in two years, you cannot uh, get five yeah, folds. Quite, can you get, <laughs> now, what is it that we're going to hear in the next few days that's going to bring you up to a higher level? Uh, it's the investments that we're, we're going to be in. If you look at the investments uh, that we, uh, we're in, it's all, I mean, uh, uh, the, um, the return on investments is about like 4% or 5% uh, with, with the fully uh, balanced uh, portfolio. We have that. But now we're going to the uh, different uh, uh, portfolios that are going to be yielding more than the 4%. What's going to yield more? Uh, if you look at the PEs, uh, I mean, uh, most of them are yielding way much more. They're private equity double, firms. Uh, yeah, they're private equity firms. They're doing way much better. So uh, the, uh, the Vision Fund, the uh, SoftBank Vision Fund is doing much more. If you look at the track record of mass sum, for instance, it's 44% IRR. We're not saying that we will hit the 44% IRR, but anything you know, uh, above 4% and below 44 would be good for us. So what's a realistic expectation for returns over time? What are you targeting? I said um, in 2025 to 2030, we're targeting, and this is after benchmarking exercise, uh, exercise that we've done with all the long-term uh, uh, pension funds and sovereign wealth mm -hmm. funds, and we find them um, between 4% to maybe 11, 12% in the best cases. And the efficient frontier uh, that we looked at and we said we want to place ourselves in is indicating between eight to 9%. So I think by 2025 to 2030, we should be looking at uh, these figures. And by 2025, how much do you figure you'll be managing? Um, it was announced actually in the, uh, in the Vision 2030, we should have at least $2 trillion assets under management by 2025, 2030, that, yeah. that neighborhood. Um, you mentioned SoftBank. You invested, you committed to $45 billion Correct. in SoftBank. Yeah. You committed $20 billion to Blackstone. Correct. Why those firms? The, the best thing in investments is to find the right partners, right? So those are really good partners. I'm not saying they are the only uh, good partners in the world because we're always on the search. And now we're talking to everybody. We're looking at different things. We're looking at their uh, previous performance, we're looking at their vision, 
and we're looking at their current teams and governance, which is very important to us because everything that we do goes through a rigorous uh, process of governance and we have a lot of things to be looked at and all of these things has to be checked and checked. So with all of the money that you're going to have to manage, do you anticipate signing on other partners at that same scale, $20 billion, $40 billion? Can you see that happening? I'm, I'm not going to commit to a number, but uh, that's what, if you look at the, the pools of investments that we have, uh, two of them are international and four are domestic. The two international is the international investments, which is, you know, the, the typical investments like, you know, 100, 500 million dollars here or there, uh, either uh, direct or indirect investments. And then we have the mega partnerships, which is something that uh, is similar to what we've done with Massasan in SoftBank and with Steve Schwarzman in Blackstone. So we will continue on doing so. How many mega partnerships do you think? I think have? we'll continue. We'll continue. And this is, I'll tell you why we're doing it. We're doing it because once you go big, you can change things. And it's not only you're going to be a passive investor do, waiting for like a passive financial investor because this is something that we don't want to do. And if you look at the terms that we have with, uh, with SoftBank or Blackstone, I mean, it's, we're changing even the face of uh, the, the uh, GP-LP uh, uh, relationship. We're not co-investing with the GP, and at the same time, we're not your typical LP. We're somewhere in the middle. We have veto rights, we have opt-out rights, we have all kinds of things. We have people sitting on, on um, advisory boards, so we know what's going on. And we have the right to put more governance into the relationships and the partnerships that we're in. It sounds to me that's the kind of thing you want out of future partners as well. Absolutely. Is that more of a priority for you than the smaller investments, the 50 to $100 million investments that you described, these mega partnerships that are measured in the billions? We do have some um, subsidiaries uh, of uh, uh, ours who are looking at this, like Sanabel and like Salik, which is looking, Sanabel is looking at everything and Salik is looking at the uh, agricultural investments. So they, they look at these uh, kind of tickets. How much, you describe six different buckets into which you put investments, four of which are domestic, two of which are international. Of the total public investment fund, what percentage are you dedicating toward international and what percentage to domestic? Currently, we have 90% uh, local, domestic, and less than 10% international, the, the deployed investments, not the committed. But uh, uh, I think this number will continue. But remember, we will have um, cash inflows coming in. So we're growing our portfolio. And that's one of our objectives, actually, is the, the growth of our portfolio. So I think by 2025, maybe uh, between 2020 and 2025, the uh, percentage is going to be uh, coming up in the international from 10 to less than 10 to about 25%. 25%. And where is that cash coming from now? We know that you're going to get some money from the Aramco IPO. It's a good start. Yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. We haven't, if you look at the uh, investments that we uh, have uh, today, it's basically all equity. We need to look at, uh, uh, you know, leverage. And that's what everybody uh, is doing. It's going to be um, uh, limited to the thing things that we're in. So if we're in one project, we, ca we can use um, the underlying uh, project as, uh, 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 as the base for the leverage with uh, no recourse to the, uh, to the um, uh, rest of the portfolios. And how do you plan to lever up? And how much leverage are you comfortable using? We t we actually, we just uh, hired uh, a new head of treasury and corporate finance. And that's part of his mandate. He's coming in. He's going to be with us, I think, in the coming uh, maybe a month or so. And that's one of the uh, questions that we'll be asking him. And hopefully, we'll have a better answer then. At the moment, though, do you think you want to lever up one times, two times, or, 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 or less? I think it's going to be way less than Much one. Less. Yeah. In what neighborhood, then? 
of, we, we still work on our, our strategy, but we conceptually we have it, but the numbers still yet to come. And that's with the intent of improving returns. Absolutely. Yasser, you've also made investments in individual companies, not just in Saudi Arabia, Correct. but outside, Uber, yep. for example. Are you going to continue doing that kind of thing? Yes. Yeah, we will. We, it's not only Uber that we've done uh, uh, direct investments. We've done with POSCO in South Korea, EPC, and we have 28% of that uh, company, but didn't get the media attention that Uber uh, had. And it was uh, a big ticket item. It's what well, it wasn't small. But uh, I think we will continue. If we see good opportunities, definitely we will continue. We have um, a good process and the PIF uh, uh, and governance and processes and people. So uh, our the number of people uh, 2015 was less than 60. Today it's well, above 200. I think within the coming two years it's going to be 500, and maybe 2025 we're going to be over a thousand. So the number is growing, and we bring in all subject matter experts in addition to the advisors that we work in with. They're just the, you know, f the best of the breed uh, of advisors from all over the world, from Saudi, from uh, the GCC countries, New York, everywhere. So if you look at the, the brain power and the muscle power that we have, it's really big. But at the same time, we said we, we're not going to go to the direct investments until we are uh, more comfortable. So two, com two big companies right now is enough, but I think in the future we will, we will see more.